Okay, let's take a look at cross example problem, unit C1, page 11. This is a problem in a direction uh, normal to the streamline coordinate system, direction N. Okay, so we are going to look at both directions, tangent and normal to the path called the streamline. So this is one of the examples in direction N. Direction S, direction N. Okay. So this is a water flows in a pipe. It's called the vertical two-dimensional band. So water gets in, goes out like this. So this is the curvature, so gravity is involved. So you have acceleration in the direction normal to the path of the streamline. Okay. If that happens, how much pressure change do you have? That is the question. Okay. So this is the vertical two-dimensional band with uh, streamlines, you can draw any number of streamlines in this flow field. This is a steady flow, okay? Suppose if the pressure is 40 kilopascal right here at point one, what is the pressure at location two? What is the pressure at location three? Let's assume for simplicity, let's simplify this problem assuming that the velocity is uniform throughout point one, two, and three, which is highly unlikely for pipe flow, but let's assume that way to simplify the problem. So, we are going to, of course, start from Euler's equation we developed. This is the Euler's equation in the direction normal to the path called the streamline. So, this is the situation here. So first of all, let's begin with the inertial coordinate system, which is a coordinate system usually you use. This is a coordinate system attached to us. This is the direction x, and then this is the direction z. Direction z is chosen because it is opposite direction against the gravitational acceleration. If you do that, this z really means that this is height, or oftentimes called altitude in aerodynamics. Okay, so that's the meaning of this z. Okay, and then I choose this particular streamline as a coordinate system, streamline coordinate system. So along this path, you are going to define a small particle, and as the particle moves along this particular streamline, you always define two directions. Direction tangent to the path, direction normal to the path, n and s directions perpendicular to each other. So if this particle moves along this streamline, you are going to always define two directions, direction tangent, direction normal, at any location, along this streamline. So happen to be right here at the location 1, you have direction S, which is tangent. Direction N, which is normal. Okay. So here we go. We have streamline coordinate system. So based on this situation, you are going to start from here and simplify this equation as much as we can. So let's simplify Euler's equation. based on the given conditions. Okay, so given conditions basically says that right here at the location one, direction n, coordinate direction n is precisely equal to the coordinate direction z. Uh, 
identical. So suppose if you take the ratio between them, d, z, d, n, this is going to be 1 because those are the same thing. So this is one such simplification for Euler's equation here. So d, z, d, n for this particular problem is 1. Okay? Number 2. I want to deal with this term, dp, dm. This is, uh, the meaning wise, this is called pressure gradient in direction normal to the pass of location 1. Pressure gradient. Why this is partial derivative? Uh, it's simply because pressure is a function of s and n coordinate direction. If you move to the direction S pressure changes, if you move to the direction N pressure also change. So in order to represent how much pressure change happens uh, with respect to the coordinate direction, you have to have partial derivative. Okay. So let's just simplify that expression. dP dN. This can be simplified. We are going to consider DP. This is just the ordinary change of pressure. Ordinary change of pressure comes with two terms. It's simply because pressure is a function of two things. So you can say this is a partial derivative of pressure with respect to S multiplied by dS plus partial derivative of pressure with respect to N multiplied by dN. Okay. So this is essentially a chain rule or expansion of this dp on the derivative of pressure p. Now note that in this case ds is zero because we're not going to consider uh, the change of direction s. We are going to only look at the change of pressure between 1 and 2 and 3 which is essentially purely any direction. Okay, So ds is zero for our particular case. Then you can simplify this equation saying dp is equal to dp dn times dn, which really means dp dn can be simplified by dp dn. Oh. Well, it's a huge change. <laughs> I have to tell you, one is a partial derivative, one is ordinary derivative. It's a big difference. Partial differential, you can never integrate because pressure depends on two variables. That's why this is partial. Okay? You can never integrate that. This is ordinary derivative. This is a pressure change purely in any direction. You can integrate this one in the direction of n. So it's a significant change. So dp dn is equal to dpdn. This is the second simplification. So if you go back to the original equation, now this partial is gone. This is this becomes ordinary derivative. That's a great news for us because we can integrate in the direction of n. Third one is this r radius of curvature. Okay, so let's take a look at radius of curvature. Radius of curvature is the radius measured from the center of radius of curvature to the location of each streamlined coordinate system. This is the center. Okay, so let's think about that. So this is the, our streamline coordinate system. For this particular streamline coordinate system where n equal to 0, radius of curvature is 6 meters. Let's imagine a different streamline that actually goes through location 2 where n equal to 1 meter, n equal to 1 meter. Radius of curvature becomes 5 meters. If you think about this particular streamline where n equal to 2 meter goes to point 3, 
Maybe it's a curvature becomes formula. So there's absolutely really definitive relationship between radius of curvature and coordinate n. Okay. Which is six minus n. If n equal to zero, radius of curvature is six meters. If n equal to one meter, radius of curvature is five meters. If n equal to two meters, radius of curvature is four meters. So this equation applies. Okay. So this can substitute here. So that's good. So let me do it right here. Yeah. Moira's equation becomes Moira's equation becomes minus gamma times one d t d n is one d p d n partial derivative becomes ordinary derivative d p d n which is equal to rho times v squared divided by radius of curvature 6 minus n. Oh, interesting. It's a good news because this is now ordinary differential equation. By integrating this equation, you can determine pressure difference between any locations in the direction of n. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So, so let's move on, yeah? Okay, so now we got equation dp dn is equal to minus gamma minus rho b square over 6 minus n. I'm going to multiply both sides by dn. You have dp is equal to minus gamma dn minus rho b square over 6 minus n. Now, let's integrate this from n equal to zero. n equal to zero is location one, of course, to n arbitrary location. So I'm going to integral from 0 to n, where the pressure is P, unknown pressure P, dp, okay. which is equal to uh, integral from 0 to n minus gamma dn minus integral from 0 to n rho b square over 6 minus n d n. Now good news about it is this is a water, so gamma is constant, so it goes outside of integral. Velocity is constant, density we assume it's constant because it's a liquid, goes outside, n is a variable, so it stays inside. But so this is going to get you, by the way, uh, at the location n equal to 0, pressure we do know it's p1. At the location n equal to zero, let's go back here. At the location n equal to zero, which is location one, we do know pressure is P1. This is known pressure. So if you if the n becomes equal to one meter, which becomes P2, P, P2. If n equal to two meters, it's going to be P3. If n equal to 1.5 meter, it's a pressure right here. If n equal to 0 0.5 meter, pressure right here. So anyways, at the location, some kind of n value, which is the pressure at that location. Pressure at point one is n equal to zero. That's P1, which we know. Right. Let's go back here. We know this is 40 kilopascal. This is the pressure 
somewhere at n. If n equal to 1 meter, it's going to be p2. If n equal to 2 meters, it's going to be p3. Okay. So finishing up this integral, this is going to get you p minus p1, pressure difference between any arbitrary location n minus pressure p1, which is, we know that, uh, is equal to minus gamma times n. This goes outside. This one becomes minus rho b square integral 0 to n dn over 6 minus n. Okay. So just a side note. Let's just take a look at this guy. I'm going to give a little bit more mass detail for that. So let's jump right here. I'm going to cut out a small tiny space. Let's finish up this mass. So you have to probably zoom in a little bit. So let's think about integral from 0 to n. dn minus over 6 minus n. This is obviously, if you do integration, it's natural log 6 minus n times minus 1 comes in because of that. Evaluate it from 0 to n. Now this becomes minus natural log 6 minus n. value n, which is equal to minus natural log 6 minus n plus natural log of 6. So this is natural log of 6 minus natural log of 6 minus n. Minus can be converted to division for natural log. So this is natural log of 6 over 6 minus n. So let's go back here. So this integration is essentially natural log 6 over 6 minus n. Okay. So here is the equation again. Pressure at any location n is equal to P1, which is 40 kilopascal, we know minus gamma n minus rho b squared natural log 6 over 6 minus n. So this is the equation we got. Okay. Really good because this is algebraic equation. You can plug in P1. We know this is 40 kilopascal. Gamma is a gamma of water. We know that. It's uh, 9,800 Newton per cubic meters. N, well, N could be zero. If so, pressure is P1. If plugging N equal to zero, P equal to P1. If N equal to one meter, it's going to get you P2, pressure at location two. If you plug in N equal to two meters, it's going to be pressure P3. Then it's a coordinate. Density we know, water density is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meters. Velocity is a uniform 10 meter per second across. And take a natural rock 6 over 6 minus 7. So, for point 0.2, n equal to 1 meter. So you just plug in n equal to 1, n equal to 1 here. The rest is property of water. Then you get P2. P2 is equal to 12 kilopascal. Do it yourself. Make sure you pick up your calculator, plug the value of gamma, rho, B, and then n equal to 1, n equal to 1 then make sure you get the pressure becomes P2, and then that is 12 kilopascal. Make sure you confirm that by yourself. 
for point three. Point three is located at n equal to two meters. Okay, that is essentially P three. P three is if you plug in n equal to two meter, n equal to two meter. This is again forty kilopascal gamma of water, density of water, velocity is ten meter per second. You're gonna get P three, which is minus twenty point one kilopascal. Again, make sure you. Confirm it by yourself by picking up your calculator. Now, interesting observation is obviously pressure changes. Let's go back here. Whoa, pressure changes. That means pressure right here is 40 kilopascal. Pressure right here we know 12 kilopascal. Pressure right here is actually negative 20.1 kilopascal. What is negative? Negative gauge. Okay. So the pressure right here is lower than the local atmospheric pressure. So it looks like if you move in the direction of N, pressure decreases quite a bit actually by turning the flow like this. One of the reasons here is if you have a turning flow like this, it is going to create acceleration in that direction. Centrifugal acceleration. Centrifugal acceleration is going to reduce the pressure quite a bit. That's what you see. And suppose if you make this flow completely flat, completely flat, there's no turn. That means Radius of curvature becomes infinity, so that means this term drops off, this becomes zero. Do you still have a pressure change? Yes, you do. What kind of pressure change do you have? It is purely hydrostatic pressure change. In other words, pressure here is 40 kilopascal. What is the pressure here, if so? It is P1 minus gamma h, gamma times 1 meter. Pressure here is gamma times pressure here is P1 minus gamma times 2 meters. Hydrostatic pressure difference shows up, even though if this is zero. So the pressure change is controlled by two things. Number one, centrifugal acceleration will change the pressure in the direction normal. Even if you have a straight pass which will make centrifugal acceleration zero because radius capture infinity. Even so, you will have a change of pressure. Why is that? It's a hydrostatic pressure difference. So Euler's equation tells you all how the pressure change happens in the direction perpendicular to the stream. Very fundamental. So you have to understand the meaning of this equation, which is applied for this example problem. Okay? That's it.